Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you to all of the people of the Most High God. Welcome. God bless you on this Sunday. Hallelujah. Come on in the house. It is time for us to praise the name of the Lord, to hear what he has to say. He has some good things that he wants to uh, talk to us about. We have prepared a message for you in this series that we have started entitled A Life Moving Forward. We are so happy that you all have decided to stop by Kingdom Life Christian Center one more time to all of Kingdom Life members and to our partners, our well-wishers, even our supporters. We thank God for you returning. Hallelujah. We thank God for you all showing up. Thank God for all of you who are sharing this content. And most importantly, all of you who are saying that you have been blessed, hallelujah, by this teaching so far. So we are so excited to be in the house of the Lord one more day, to be in the land of the living. We have all been graced with a day a gift that is called today. And we don't take that for granted. We said that all the time. And we hope that you are thankful and of a grateful heart, knowing that many laid down last night that didn't wake up. But the grace of God, hallelujah, he breathed the breath of life into each and every one of our nostrils on this morning, started us on our way. And because you are here at the house of the Lord, I know he has clothed you and you are in your right mind because you're right here. Glory be to God. And so many are walking around, but they're walking around just at the point of death. But we thank God for all of you who are coming to hear the word today. Come on in the house with a mind and a heart to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You have an opportunity today to have a love encounter with God. And if you are one of those ones who are here for the very first time, I would like to take the time out to say a welcome to Kingdom Life Christian Center Virtual Church Service. Hallelujah. Via our YouTube channel entitled Kingdom Life Christian Center online connection. We are looking for people from every state to connect with this ministry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you do not have a church home, if you are dislocated, if you are in the interim, you say, I am at a church, but I've been searching for another one, but I didn't want to come from underneath a covering until that time. And you feel the leading of the Holy Spirit that you like what you hear right here in this uh, uh, service. And you like what Pastor Betty is teaching and what's going on here, then we ask you not to delay. Come on, make your mind up. We are talking about a life moving forward. Stop procrastinating. If the Holy Spirit has been unctioning you new and nudging you a little bit about this ministry, don't delay. Come on, hook up. We have need for you. Glory be to God. And the Lord, most importantly, have a need for you. Hallelujah. So we are thankful and we don't take it for granted when you guys continue to show up for this specific service because there are many that's going on today, but we know that by uh, uh, by the, uh, the strategic orchestration of the Lord, you are here today because we are truly in belief that nothing is done by accident or by chance. Glory be to God. So we are excited. We are going to give you a quick a scripture reading, uh, and then we're going to pray and go right into the word of God. Uh, and we're going to do it in that reverse order. We're going to pray and go into our scriptures. Dear Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come is our prayer today. We are praying, Lord, that your plan, your will, and your purpose will be done in this earth as it has already been purposed in the heavens. Because we know that you have a perfect plan, a good plan. God, and we pray that your uh, man who you have uh, called and given authority over this earth, those who have accepted Jesus Christ have now gained back, hallelujah, that dominion that was lost in the garden by Adam. And God, as we have purpose in our heart, we pray that we are instruments in this earth, God, to, to make sure that your plan is going forth in this earth. We thank you that you left us as representatives and ambassadors 
uh, to represent all that Jesus came to do was to seek and save those that were lost and the power that has been invested in us as your offspring. God, we take it seriously, God. And so we pray that your will will be done in this earth. This earth is uh, in a mess, God. Our world is in a mess. And the only thing that can straighten it out is the power of God. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord God, for being, hallelujah, sitting on the throne, you are sitting high and you're looking low. The eyes are before your throne and they're going to and fro in the earth and you are aware of what's going on. Your eyes are beholding both the evil and the good and you have your perfect time for your thoughts and not ours, neither our ways, your ways. So we're praying that your kingdom, your reign, your rule, your reality, and your work, your uh, righteousness will begin to reign and dominate in this earth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are uh, given uh, your son. Um, you, it pleased you to bruise him, your righteous son, your innocent son, on our behalf. Thank you for seeing us through the eyes of the blood. Hallelujah. As we come before your throne. Now, Spirit of the living God, hallelujah, we pray that you will come into this service today, be our special guest, anoint us afresh, hallelujah, let the mighty works of God be done here today, you already know the plan of the Father, you know where the, what the people need to hear, you know, hallelujah, glory be to God, the mandate that God has given this ministry and have given me as headship of this ministry, and we want to walk after your direction. We get out of the driver's seat and ask you to take control of this service today. Hallelujah. As we are purposing to sit down in our flesh, we are asking you then to rise up mightily in me so that signs, wonders, and miracles and the demonstration of the Spirit will follow this powerful word that is teached that is taught here today. We know that it's been given unto you by inspiration. Therefore, according to Isaiah 55 and 11, the word of God shall go out and accomplish the thing that it pleases and it will not return it to the Lord's void, meaning empty and useless and not productive, but it will produce in our lives if we allow it to produce. Let us not be hearers of the word only, but let us move past hearing and get into that 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 uh, vein where we are uh, doers of the word so that we can execute in this earth, seeing the manifestations of all the wonderful things that you are so ready and willing to release in the earth, but it's by your man using his authority, using his mouth in the name of the Lord and his faith to believe that it can be so. Now, spirit of the living God, think through my mind, speak through these lips of clay so that the word of God will come forth unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. We, hallelujah, dismiss distraction, hallelujah, that come to distract the listener from hearing. Let them not just hear what they're natural, but let them hear what thus the Spirit is saying to them specifically and what he is saying to us as the church. We thank you for it now. We believe it to be so. Glory be to God. And as this word is completed and come to its conclusion, we are praying that men and women, boys and girls, are running to the altar and asking, what must I do to be saved? In the name of the Lord Jesus, where, where healing is needed, let healing flow. Where deliverance is needed, we, we pray that deliverance is flowing in Jesus name where hope is needed where joy is needed where faith is needed whatever is needed after this uh, encounter that they have a love encounter here as in this sanctuary as we have made it conducive to your spirit to be here that we pray that they are going to have whatsoever things they need to move forward in the, their assignment and to in the fulfillment of their purpose. We pray this and we believe this and we do call it done. It is so and so it is. And we take charge of this atmosphere. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. We're going to turn your attention to the book of uh, I, um, the book of Psalms, I'm sorry, chapter number 40, Psalms 40. And it reads like this. This is a Psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord 
and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He bought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song, glory to God, in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Underline, make the Lord his trust and respect it, not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which you have done and your thoughts, which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The word of the Lord is blessed. If I try to think of all of the things that God's done for me and how good he's been to me, it is too much for me to even count. That's what that is trying to say. If we try to recall all of the times that God's been there for us. The devil wants to show you times where you say, the Lord wasn't there for you. He He wouldn't have let you went through that and you wouldn't have been going through this and this wouldn't have happened. Tell him he is a lie. If we, we know by the word that many are the wonderful works that the Lord has wrought in our lives. You may have some scars. You may have some battle wounds. But the point is that you are still alive. You have been considered an overcomer. You survived that. And the Lord knew that you had in you what it took to overcome that test, that trial, that attack. Glory be to God. The attacks and the, the testing trials, they are coming to make us strong. They're coming to fine tune us. They're coming to prune us so that we can produce more. Hallelujah. It's not coming to kill us. Hallelujah. The Lord will never ever, people of God, put more on you than you're able to bear. And when you get to the point that you feel like you cannot take it and you said, Lord, I can't take any more. He already knows how much you can take and he will hallelujah calls that avenger to get up off of you in the name of the lord jesus but if you persevere god is testifying about you he knows that your strength is stronger than what you're feeling naturally speaking we are more greater in our spirit man than we are in our natural it's the natural thing a natural man that feels the pain feels the hurt cry the tears, suffer that blow. But the spirit man is much stronger. He told his disciples when he came back and they kept being asleep, when he told them to watch for him, he said, go ahead and take your rest. For I know that your spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we have to make sure that we are strengthening our spirit man so it can manifest through our natural man. And if you said, I don't know, how much more I can take if I'm going to make it. You are walking through your valley. Hallelujah. He says that, yea, though I walk through the valley. He didn't say that you weren't going to escape the valley, but you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But the thing is, you don't have to fear. For why? Because the Lord is with me. He told me if God tells you you're walking through it, you'll never get stuck there and you'll never die there. That means he's telling you, Ahead of time, you're going to get through this valley and you will arrive on the other side. Oh, hallelujah. I feel like preaching right here, you all. How, who is that for? God has bought many of you, as this scripture has said, verse two, he bought you up out of a horrible pit, out of miry clay where you was in quicksand sinking, slowly but, but surely sinking. And then what did the Lord do? Came and rescued you. Set your feet on upon a rock. And not only did he set your feet on the rock, then he established your goings. Hallelujah. He put then a new song. You are no longer singing the blues, but he put a new song of praise. Hallelujah. A new, a new song of, nevertheless, I'm still going to praise you. Nothing will be able to separate me from the love of God. Not tribulation, no pearl, peril, no sword, nor things present or things to come would be able to separate me from the Lord. That's the new song you sing. Instead of, whoa, whoa, it's me. I'm about to die. God, where is you? Why are you letting all of this befall me? But God will give you a brand new song. 
Oh man, I want to preach this thing right here. He even uh, giving you praise unto your God so that men, listen y'all, verse three, underline, so many can see it. He is going to make a table for some of you in the very presence of your enemies. You all, I have keep telling you all, you are not to stop, keep focusing on your haters who hate you, who is plotting against you, who is scheming. No weapon that is formed against you would ever be able to prosper. And even the lying tongue that rises up against you in judgment, when people come to judge that thing or to come to decide whether this is true or not, it says that that lie would be condemned. So what am I saying? Don't focus on the haters. Hallelujah. Because when God is bringing you through that test, when you survive that test, glory be to God, when you overcome that test, hallelujah, because you have the whole arm of God on, even though many came against you from the right and from the left, you still overcome. And now he says, the new song you're going to see, he's going to give you that praise after you come out. And he says, and many are going to see it. And what are they going to do? It's going to cause them to fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So may God a blessing. Hallelujah. To the reading and to the hearers of this word. And may you receive that word in the name of the Lord. As I read these scriptures, I don't just pick something that any, many, mighty more. I try to pick something that I believe God wants to say, something of praise, something of a good report, something that's going to encourage your spirit for the next week, something that you could go back and read, meditate, and muse until it become alive and manifesting in your life. We are so excited. Hallelujah. So, Without any further ado, we are going to go right into part four. This is part four of the series entitled A Life That Is Moving Forward. We are about forward movement here. It is time. We don't spend too much time uh, reminiscing on the past, going back to the past, stepping backwards into the past. It is time for us to move forward. No time like the present. Whatever you're going to do for God, you better get busy doing it right now. Glory be to God. That's what I heard the spirit of the Lord saying, what project he told you to do, whatever vision he's given you, whatever your dream is. And we're talking to, uh, to the whole man, both naturally speaking and spiritually. Hallelujah. Whatever he's told you to do, you better get busy with doing it. Hallelujah. He is looking for you to show up on the scene, get into your place of influence so that we can change this world uh, set the captives free and and win many souls and preach this gospel to the utmost parts of the earth because nothing can culminate until all have heard until all have heard the gospel and it is time for us to get busy with what we're about to do get some blinders on keep your eyes full focus ahead run your race and stay your course stop trying to be like anybody else stop trying to be a duplicate when you are an original you cannot be duplicated you are you Unique, fearfully and wonderfully made by the Father with a well architectural blueprint for your life. Hallelujah. And there's nobody like you. You are a gift and a gift to this world. But if you're not showing up, then somebody is suffering because you are not obeying God. It's time for all of us to say, I am going to obey God. I am going to not seek my own will. I need to seek what God is saying for me. Because this is time for me to get my life out of stuck and get my life into the forward movement. For much too long have I stayed here. Glory be to God. I have stayed in toxic relationship when the Holy Spirit been telling me to cut them. I've been, I've been, uh, uh, keep on getting stuck time and time again in the same old sins. Hallelujah. It's time for us to leave sin behind, leave toxic relationships behind, leave doubt behind, fear, leave that anxiety, that unbelief behind. Glory be to God. And it's time for us to shift out of the parking gear, out of the neutral gear, out of the reverse gear. Glory be to God. And it's time for us to put our, our life into full of uh, gear, a forward moving in the dry mode, hallelujah, ahead. We got to be like that widow that told her servant, drive 
and move, go forward. And don't you slack not your writing. Don't you slow down unless I tell you to. Because I got a request before the Lord. And I need to get to the man of God so I can hear what he is saying. Because I know that the word of God, one word from the, the Lord, hallelujah, will ease my fears, calm my doubts, remove all this anxiety, glory be to God. And most importantly, give me my answer. Get me to where the, the answer is. Hallelujah. And and God has used the fivefold ministry gift, that man of God and that woman of God, and put the word of God in their mouth for you. That's why I tell you, when you are uh, setting yourself to come to service virtually, be as if you're going to the brick and mortar building. Uh, shut down everything, cut out that TV, turn off that noise in the background and give God your full attention because the word that you've been seeking all week, the answer that you've been asking God about is in the man and woman of God's mouth. So listen attentively. Listen also to the whole entirety of the lesson. You said, well, she's not saying what I really want to hear right now. I don't know. It doesn't seem anointed right now what she's saying or he's saying and then you click it off and you click it off before you hear your word the anointing uh the anointed word is more about uh exciting your emotions giving you the inclination to dance and the music anybody can dance to music animals dance to music and i'm saying but it's time for the the flat-footed preaching and teaching of the word of god preaching is uh, can be more charismatic and uh, it, and it, it is more um, what I want to call oh man it's at the tip of my tongue it it, it is is to uh, appeal to the emotional part of you sometimes that charismatic movement but teaching is more about instruction information giving you tools how to move forward whereas more preaching is more about inspiration. Hallelujah. And I'm saying we got to put it both together. You want to tune up, that's fine. But don't be tuning up with a lot of amen and look at your neighbor and, and amen walls and you haven't really said nothing of the word for them to take into their, their, their next week that they can listen at and to hear a godly principle that will get them the victory in their life. Glory be to God. So we got to get our whole life Balance. I haven't even started my teaching yet, but anyway, so we're talking about a life that is moving forward. And many, too many are going backwards instead of moving forward. And I want you to hear what the spirit is saying to you specifically in this teaching, because he is saying something to us. I heard him say that it's time for you to tell my people, it's time for them to do whatever they're going to do from the Lord. No more of this playing around. I don't care who it is. If people are playing around with your time, playing around with your gift, playing around with your anointing, you better recognize it. I don't care who they are and how long you've been believing in them, trusting in them, and underneath them, you better get your eyes focused on what God has called for you to do, and then you better take a, a movements and cut some things. We've been talking in this lesson, go back to parts one through three, we've been talking about, about the, the, the three-part core that is not easily broken or cut. Some of you are attached to three-part cords. God's been uh, dealing with you, telling you to get out, and you don't want to. Why? Because you feel comfortable there. You feel secure there. You feel safe there. You feel prosperous there. And that's sometimes God say this, I got another place for you. Abraham, I got somebody, I got someplace else for you to go. Matter of fact, the, the, the nature of your kinfolk Hallelujah. Uh, the the uh, Chaldeans, if you look at the, up them, you'll see why God called him out from his people. He said, I got a place for you. Hallelujah. That's going to be your blessing. You're going to be a blessing. Hallelujah. And you're going to be able to bless others. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, he obeyed and he went out. He didn't know all where God was leading him, but he knew he was going to be at a good place. And I'm saying God is going to lead some of you to your good place, your wealthy place, your Canaan land. Glory be to God. And he's saying for some of you, I've already prepared it, trying to show you 
For how long, like the children of Israel, would you lay slack to go in to possess the land where God has already prepared for you? Why? Because you have mastered where you are and you get accolades where you are. People tell you how good of a job you're doing and uh, you feel like that you uh, don't have to move because nothing is broken. Glory be to God. I'm in a good space right now in my life. So far, life's been pretty good to me, but life could be better. And if you are at that place, you have succeeded in that era. Glory be to God in that area. But there is more for you. As long as we live, we're supposed to be growing. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a life moving forward. What does a life moving forward look like? And we go over this in basically all the teachings. But a life loop moving forward is a life that is changing. A life that is not stuck. A life that is evolving a life that is maturing, a life that is shifting, is able to shift when God said shift. And I'm saying you've been in park. There are times where you be in park, reverse. You know, I also have a teaching on a YouTube channel. You can search for shifting gears where I talk about the different gears in the car. And they both have their, um, uh, their purpose. But some of them, the car was mainly designed to get you to your destination, meaning it is designed to go forward, to be into the drive. Reverse was just an alternative gear so that you can park the thing or, or maneuver to get around obstacles. Uh, parking was when uh, uh, to give it a rest when you're not moving anywhere. Uh, then neutral was really never meant to to be utilized, but it has its time when you get to the point your car has died, you put it in neutral, it gives it some type of movement. But all of those specific gears are not the gear that the car is made really to ultimately drive, to be in. It's ultimately to drive. And so when we're talking about a life moving forward, yes, if it's a life that is changing, evolving, maturing, enlarging, learning, and yes, shifting. It is a life that is awakening to truth. It is a life that is motivating, a life that is progressing. And it's a life also that is going to be challenging. You can't stay comfortable. Hallelujah. You cannot uh, re uh, um, keep on avoiding situations that are challenging. There are people in life that they say they can't even function when they have a choice that they got and they are challenging. Things are challenging. It, it's way too much for them. They don't like to think about hard things. They like everything to be hunky and dory and, and flowing. And that's not life, y'all. So you got to be able to shift and move forward. Hallelujah. Your life that is moving forward is going to be a challenging life. You're going to be chartering unfamiliar terrain and territory. But because it's unfamiliar, don't mean it's bad. The land of Canaan, he, uh, they sent spies into the city, 10 of them. But how many came back with a good report? Because they all saw the same thing, but they all had a different viewpoint. They saw naturally with their eyes, but they, but they didn't come back with a, a good uh, uh, perspective. They saw the giants. They focused on the giants rather than the land itself. And, and so then they saw themselves small, incapable of going in. And uh, they saw the enemies there. Glory be to God. And because it was going to be a challenge, glory be to God. He didn't send them there to give them a warped view and to come back and say, we are already defeated. We don't have what it takes to go in and possess the land. If God already had told you that's your land, that means he's going to conquer everything in there for you to come in there. I went for you to give, bring back a report so it would give the people inspiration. Let us get up out of this stuck mode. Let's do what we need to do. Let's listen to the leader so that we can go in and get this land that we keep on playing around with, taking us years. Hallelujah. The children of Israel went around and around years in that wilderness and they didn't have to because why they kept getting stuck how they want to go back to egypt and they prayed to get out of there some of you prayed to get out of the situation and god has opened the door and what are you doing you either stuck or you going or you going back 
we set small steps in the wrong direction, it's going to get you into the wrong place. The same way small steps in the right direction will land you up in the right place in you to your Canaan land. So what are you doing? Go and possess it. So I am saying to you today, we are in this era where you, the rubber has met the road. You're going to have to make a crucial decision. You're going to either go on to stay stuck in your past or your present, or you're going to take a decision that even though it may be scary, even though I don't understand it all, I'm going to move forward with my life. People may not understand it. They may say, what's wrong with you? What has happened to you? And say, life has happened to me. The word has happened to me. And he's challenging me. And I'm going to take up that challenge. Well, praise the Lord. I get so excited. So let me slow down just a little bit here. So, so we want to make sure that our life is moving forward, that we have not allowed anything or anybody to set artificial boundaries for us, saying how far we can go, what we can do, what we can have, and what we can be. But we only want that to be directed by the Lord for God sees us in a bigger light than what we see ourselves, giving us such great potential Hallelujah! that um, many have made this statement that we will go to our grave with so much untapped potential. So we are excited. So um, we're going to go into the word of God. If you got your Bible Hallelujah. Turn to uh, Romans chapter number 12. Romans 12. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be very long before you if the Holy Spirit says the same. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So in Romans 12 verses 1 through 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, and that word beseech is a word like and really urging you and almost like begging. So it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Many people are want uh, badges and rewards. Oh, I live right. I do good. And that, uh, no, that's your reasonable service. You're not doing anything so great. Glory be to God. And be not conformed. I don't mean it like that, but I mean, uh, this is just our reasonable service to serve the Lord. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. See that ing on the word renewing? It's not having a a mind renewal, which we had that specific occurrence when our minds was renewed to the things of Christ. That is what gave us uh, that desire to go to the altar and to seek after God and want to be saved because at some point our mind was not renewed. But when we accepted Jesus Christ, we got a total mind renewal. But because it got renewed, it's got to stay renewed. And the way to do that is a continual renewing of the mind. How you have to do that, you got to be uh, uh, renew the mind uh, and prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You renew that mind by um, thinking of whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report. How do you do that? By attending to reading and studying. You hear I said reading and studying the word of God. This Bible is not like a novel book. You just can't pick it up and read a couple of chapters and say, hey, I'll pick up tomorrow. You've got to take that Bible. You've got to read it, meditate it, muse it, examine it. you got to say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? you got to dissect it. You've got to get the concordance and see and and, and take the word in context and, and all of that. And so it is by renewing our minds with the principles of God, with what he has said, renewing our minds to how he says we're supposed to live, uh, how we are supposed to act, renewing our minds to the things that he said about us, etc. And so, uh, so why did I bring this up? Because if you do not, uh, Take on this scripture, all of verse one and two. He's asking you that we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Then he says, 
be not conformed to this world. When we are conformed, that's why I call as a believer, you're in a place of stuff. When you're conformed to this world, you're not moving forward in the things of God. He's asking that we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we have to make a decisive dedication that these lives of ours is not our own, that we're going to present all of us, all of our members, all of our faculties as a service to God. We're not presenting unto him like they did in the Bible days, dead animals as sacrifices, but our bodies is the sacrifice. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, this living sacrifice, we're going to devote it and consecrate it and so that it could be well-pleasing to God. And this is just the rational, intelligent service of our spiritual worship to the Lord. And when we are not conformed to the world, what does the world mean? To this age, to this culture. We talked last week that we are not here to uh, blend with the culture. We're not here to adapt to the culture. We are here to change the culture and to be transformed from this culture fashioning ourselves after and uh, adapting uh, to, we are not to be fashioned after the world and adapting to its external, to its superficial customs and, and uh, laws and what the majority is thinking. But we got to be transformed, changed in our inner man by that renewal of our mind, having new ideas, insights and concepts and having a brand new attitude. Any man being Christ, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he is a new creation. That means you don't get new flesh and new new uh, eyes and a whole new body, you look different. That means your inner man is being made anew. You are born again. That old old man and that old spirit man has died. And now you have become a, a new creation. So we have a new attitude. We have a desire to love what God loves and hate what he hates so that we may prove for ourselves what is acceptable, what's the perfect will of God. And I believe this is a side note and many of us are walking in God's permissible will and we're not working, walking in his perfect will for us. And I want to be not just in his permissible will, I want to be in his perfect will. And so what am I saying? And his perfect will for me is not to be stuck is not to stay in, in neutral, not to stay in, go into the reverse and not to stay uh, in that part. My, his per perfect will is for us to be continually to move forward. Cause we, so we must read, uh, be, uh, pay attention and instantly fix everything in our life that is keeping pulling us back, tugging at us, trying to get us to go backwards, trying to get us to go be in that stuck mode and readily recognize what God wants for us. And then after we recognize what he wants out of our lives, where he's trying to take us forward to, when he wants us to have this life that is moving forward, once we recognize this, now we got to quickly respond to it. I teach often about it's not enough to just hear and be excited about hearing and know the truth, but not executing anything. It's about putting things into execution mode. Hallelujah. Unlike the culture that is around us, we supposed to uh, who is always dragging us down to their level of immaturity, to their level of thinking. God wants to bring out the best through his people. And he wants to show forth the glory of him that have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How is he going to do that? Not by the words we are saying, because people are tired of, we, we, we see in the politics, we're tired of hearing promises and promises. Some standing saying they're standing on moral issues that they know we're passionate about and they have no in inclination or they have no uh, plans on, on making sure that they put effort into uh, what they have promised. It is just a campaign trick. And so we are falling for this, but we are supposed to be we, we are supposed to be uh, coming to a level of maturity where we are pushing forward and that we want what God wants for us, hate what he hates. Glory be to God. And, and so we don't want to be dragging ourselves around and, and to the popular opinion. We want to be 
people that are moving forward in all that God has told for us to do, being uh, good representatives of his call for our lives so that he can bring the best out of us and develop us, make us well-informed and well-formed, matured individuals in him. And so that's why I brought that scripture up is that in order for you to come out of your stuck places, you got to have your mind renewed to it. Because many of you are hanging around dead, desert, dry places. Don't you feel it? Don't you feel it in your spirit? I know you do. If you're a child of God, you feel it in your spirit. But some of you just pushing it off, brushing it aside. But I hear the voice of the Lord saying, will you continue to hold on to things that are not getting you anywhere? Will you be obedient and let go of the very thing? Or would you let go of the people? Would you let go what you hold so dear if he's telling you to let go? Or are you going to stay stuck right there because you like it so much? Or because you don't want to let go of it? This thing is so precious to you. Things that are keeping your wounds open, keeping your tears flowing, keeping your heart broken and your and keeping your wounds bleeding, keeping your progress hindered, keeping your place on hold, being manipulated, hallelujah, being uh, 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 tolerated and not celebrated because you have expectations of things possibly getting better. And that's okay for us to stay at places and to uh, weigh things out and wait to see if things are going to transpire. But 30 years and it's not changed and it's not the better. You still there. I'm saying, hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody because God's given me this word. What are you holding on so dear that you feel in your spirit that you kind of heard the voice of the Lord? You already know if you tell God, you, you know in your shanana. As they said, you know when God is telling you. They talk of they say it's in in uh instinct and it's they they say it's intuition and all that. I'm saying some of this is the voice of God wooing you, the the urging of the Holy Spirit saying you have overstaged your welcome. It is time for you to go to another level. It is time for you to move. And we we give him a list of why it's more beneficial to us to stay right where we are. I tell you, y'all, I'm not saying that this stuff is easy. This is not to condemn you. It's to get you to be thought-provoking and to think. Glory be to God. Because there are some things and some people that you are not going to be able. Listen, people of God. There are some things and there are some people that you are not going to be able to take it to your future. Say it with me. There are some people and there are some things that I'm not going to be able to take it to my future. And if you fight that, you're going to find yourself in the stuck mode. Your life is not going to be moving forward because why those things are going to become a drag for you. It's going to be just like carrying, I, I, I talk about Hebrews 12 and 1 when he tells us to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us to give a pictorial of that because I'm a pictorial person. I like to give you imageries because you can relate to that. I see a person who is set out to climb, to, to, to have their life elevated and to climb and to uh, set themselves for the challenge of that mountain that is ahead. Because at the top of that mountain, they see something as a reward. It's their upward climb to success, upward climb to their destiny and promise. But I can see it as when you have not left what and try to take things into your future and you're not supposed to, it's like those weights that easily to beset you. As you all notice, when you always start off to, to do what God told you to do, start off in your vision and dream, here comes baggage. Old friends pop up out of the places. Old relatives uh, uh, that was draining on you start to come back into your life with multiple needs and, and you name it. And then you, what you do, it's almost like climbing, getting ready to take your ascent. And then someone has put rocks in a backpack or the or putting weights in that backpack as you're climbing to make that ascent harder, to try to keep you from meeting your progress. And you still trying to say, hey, I know it's there, but I'm I'm gonna still go on. No, when you know that the easiest thing to do is to unpack so that you could you could continue running your race. And I said, I am challenging some of you. I told you this is going to be a challenging series. 
I'm going to charge some of you to do some things that may not seem comfortable. I want you, uh, I hold, want some of you to think on this for I heard this in my spirit. Some, you will have to reevaluate where and with whom you have been giving some of your loyalty to. You will be challenged, yes, to leave some things where you have given much loyalty, but have not received any or a little appreciation. You have not received the harvest for what you are doing. Some of you are staying in places because somebody is, they listen, because they are providing some crucial need in your life. Somebody is providing you employment. Somebody is providing you some resources. Somebody is providing you some support. You hear what I'm saying? And that's the hardest part right there. When someone is providing something of value to you that you need in your natural life, it is for your sustainability, for your livelihood or whatever, because the enemy knows that a, that a man will do anything to eat and to be well off in life. And so what did he do? He apply put people in your life that will supply some type of support for you, but it is not for the right reason or that support is, is designed to keep you attached there. So that when God is giving you some direction to move, to change, to evolve, to mature, to shift, you can't. Because why? Your loyalty is right there. Ah, glory to God. God, whoever it's for, this is for. Help them to be humble enough to hear it and to receive it in the way that I'm giving it. So I am convinced that it is fear that is keeping people hanging around these type of places and people that they need to cut or to let, let loose. And they should have done it a long time ago. For the the law of sowing and reaping is this, is that if you sow, you're going to have a reaping season. If some of you are sowing much, you're getting some harvest, but it's not the harvest God desired for you. He wants a great harvest and you're getting the scraps of the harvest. I'm just saying, glory be to God, I don't apologize. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. So I'm going to caution each and every one of you. Non-believers, this can be applicable for you as well. Hallelujah. And believers, it's like any human being. It is time for you to master your desires rather than you letting your desires master you. You hearing from God, your obedience to God's directives, your obedience to your life assignment, your obedience and being true to who you are. Some of you are sitting in the church and you are muffled because you don't want to go against the grain. You see some things, you know some things, but you got to blend. You got to stay stuck because of circumstances. God does not want you to lose yourself. And so you've got to master your desires and put them in right perspective and right priority for your life uh, and to be true to yourself, seeing your own value, if no one else will, is the utmost importance. If you, uh, if what you want or, or if your desires in life becomes your top priority, and you would do anything to obtain those desires, you will begin to tolerate things that you shouldn't or normally wouldn't tolerate. You will make decisions with your life that can cost you, uh, uh, cost a lot. And your desires that you have decided that you're going to have them met with all costs, that the fulfilling of your own human desires are greater than that of your destiny. That is the danger. And the danger is this. You become a person that would be easily manipulated and tricked. People, they smell vulnerability. They prey on those who have a certain need to be fulfilled, who don't see at the, the end result their assignment, who don't know their purpose, who don't see them getting to a good destiny. And what do they do? They will manipulate you. And what happens? 
you will remain stuck there. They will give you all the reasons why you should remain where you are. They smell it. They prey on it. They take advantage of it. And I'm speaking to some of you today. You know who you are. Hallelujah. Your vulnerability uh, has to be dealt with. Because it's human nature for people to take advantage of vulnerable people. But your obedience to your assignment and, and, and your knowing what you are worth is very important. Out of sync priorities will cause people to remain stuck in places for years on end just for the fact to fulfill that desire that sometimes sadly never come to pass, which can lead to a whole life of regrets. Now we're going to take you, I got so many illustrations in the word. Y'all stick with me through this series, but let's talk about Noah a little bit. Noah could have been a person who got stuck because he didn't understand God's commands, what God wanted him to do. And let's go to Genesis chapter number six. Glory be to God. And uh, let's begin to read. Verse three, and the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his, day, his days shall be 120 years. And there were giants, I'm going to skip down to five. And God, so in other words, God said he saw the evilness of man, man continually to be wicked. And he says, I'm not going to always strive with man. Man was supposed to live long, but by reason of man disability, his day shall be 120 years. And we see now people saying, people don't get past 70 years. If we see a peace person get 120 years old, that's a phenomenon. But I'm saying we were supposed to live long, but by man's disobedience continual to try God, man's days were, were cut short. And you will see in the Old Testament, people were living 900 years, 300 years, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but anyway, so when we go down to verse five, now God has gotten to the point and it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, you see that? What era do that sound like now? Listen to that. I'm, I'm, Y'all know where I'm going. Y'all know this is where we live in today. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination. So everything people are imagining to do, they got the audacity to do it. That's why I'm saying for the people of God, this message is for us. They coming out of the closet. They changing laws. They demanding their rights and stuff. And we stuck. We still have no speaking a lot, but having no voice of authority or change or influence and every imagination that they're doing, uh, uh, that they're thinking they're doing. And this is what was happening in Noah's day. And he says, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only, only evil, continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, listen, God always saves a remnant of people. He made his man. He know man was good. He know man was created in his image. He know the ability of man. So even though he was tired of man and everybody did evil continually, there was yet a righteous man. Glory to God. Aren't you glad for the remnant of somebody who's going to stand up for God? And that's why I'm saying, don't you get stuck. Don't you follow the majority because the, because the majority is believing something, agreeing to something, or going in a certain direction don't mean that they're right. Who ever said that the minority is wrong? The minority can be right. And you will see that God always had someone who he can look. He always looked for a way that judgment can be passed over. And here in the Lord said, that I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But glory be to God. Verse 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
nor found favor in God's eyes in the midst of all of the craziness, the unrighteousness. God found a man. All he needs is one. All he needs is you. And But that's why the enemy want to keep you stuck, keep you from moving forward, because you alone can affect change in this world, can affect change in every sphere of influence in this earth. You can be a voice of reasoning, a voice of, of, um, of strategies, a voice that can change the trajectory of things that we're dealing with, a voice that could come in and give uh have innovation, insights, and ideas and concepts that people been struggling with for years. And this is supposed to be the people of God who they seek after, who have this ability because we have been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. We have been, we have been given to operate at a high level, but we've been stuck. Hallelujah. And we talked about our opening scripture, how he, David said, you bought my feet up at the muck and the miry clay. And the enemy want to get us stuck back into mud, our life on stuck. The devil is alive. We, we, our eyes are opening. God got a remnant and an army of people in this last dispensation that is going to stand up boldly for him. Glory be to God. We're going to say no more parking, no more sitting on the side lot of uh, the side bench of life, we're getting into the game. The game may be challenging. The game may have experts in there. I may be a rookie on board, but I'm going to come in with, with intensity. I'm going to come in with force. I'm going to come in with my with, with what I got. I'm going to work it and let it, I'm going to work it and I'm going to do my best and let God's favor rest upon me and I could turn things around. Oh, that came down for a download from the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And let's keep reading. And he says, but nor he is the one that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, so now let's go back to, um, let's see here. Uh, now let's go to verse number uh, 13. And God said unto Nor, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them from the earth. And then he's given him a directive. Make me an ark of Oprah, Ophrah wood, rooms, shall you make an ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And I'm not going to go uh, further on into that. What I want you to see is that what if Noah had got stuck? Noah was obedient. He moved forward in the directive that God given him, not even understanding it. He moved in faith and his obedience was crucial that he did not de uh, deviate from it, not even 1% from what God had instructed him to do. And I believe if he had deviated from it just 1%, that ark probably wouldn't have stayed afloat. But he blindly moved forward in to the point that he was the person who was responsible for the saving of mankind, all of humankind. And so then let's go down to verse 22. And it says, uh, does did nor according to what? Circle that word, all. That's what I'm saying. He did not deviate from what God told him to do. Saying, well, you know, this looked like a little shortcut because I'm pretty sure it took him a long time to build that. Probably in the hot sun, probably being mocked by people who asked, want to know what is he doing? He's building the art. So, so we read in uh, the 22nd verse, does did know according to all, you see that word, all that God commanded him, so did he. And if you look at that word all, that's why I said he did not deviate from what God told him to do, not 1%. He didn't remain stuck in his own head and what he thought. He just obeyed God, his instructions, and then he saved the entire human race. And he says, and all that God commanded him, so did he. And God is saying, did you do what I asked you to do? That is the question we all are going to be asked when we stand before the Lord. We're not to be going to be judged as believers. We're going to give an account of everything that we've done since we accepted Jesus as Lord. And part of that is what was your obedience. And he said uh, in the scripture, the uh, scripture says, and I'm going to get that for you all in the 
That scripture is found in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number um, 7. It said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now, we know in context, this was talking about a um, uh, certain story. But when we're saying this is the same thing that uh, this principle is applicable to our lives. You are running your race. In other words, uh, another translation said, you were running the race nobly. Who has interfered in, hindered, and stopped you from your heeding and following what the truth? And I'm saying following what God told you to do, following your assignment, attending to your purpose, and then that which reaches your destiny. And we will have to answer that question. Who and what I would say hindered you? And uh, and once one scripture said it, I mean, one translation said it, what did inflect in on you that, that kept you from obeying what God has told you to do? And that is called a life moving forward. You can allow things and people and even yourself to keep you in the stuck mode to hinder you from all of the great things that God has in store for you. I want to be able to answer God uh, as a yes. I've been singing that song almost all week. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. And when we say yes, we're saying yes to whatever you told us to do. We trust you and believe it. Now, going back to the story of Noah, I'm going to read what he did for us uh, uh, out of Hebrews chapter number 11, Hebrews 11 and verse num verse 7. And I'll start in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then here is the account of what happened with Noah by faith. Verse 7, by faith, Noah. Stop right there. How did he do this? By faith. For you to get your life out of stuck, you're going to have to operate in faith and move forward in faith. It is the only way to do it. If you do not, I'm going to tell you, they're going to talk to your mind. He's going to give you false imaginations. He's going to be shooting those darts to your mind until you can't do it. You got to operate by faith. So by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which, you see it, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. One man deciding his obedience and not deviating from the command of Lord of the Lord. He did not stay stuck in his time looking at what everybody else was doing. He stayed fully focused on what God was telling him to do. He moved forward with urgency, with the plans that God's given him. What if he had a delay, you all? This is what I'm saying. The water was coming. God designated it. He waited for his obedience for him to finish. And as soon as he finished, what did God do? Close the man, shut him in. So by his faith, prompted by faith, uh, being forewarned of God of the, th of, the, of the events that was coming. And that's what I saw. The Lord said there are uh, events coming in our future. And that's why you have been called Pastor Betty. And, and, and one of your mandates for from now on is to prepare the people of God because the forewarning of God is coming. And this warning through this series is get out of stuck. Make those tough decisions. Stop procrastinating. Stop giving excuses. 
Stop disqualifying yourself. Stop having that low self-image of yourself. Understand that there are events that are coming that are not visible yet, but they are sensed only in the spirit realm. And that's where I'm sensing it. And that's why my own personal, this lesson came out of my own personal dissatisfaction with some things that I was seeing and experiencing, some things I was a part of, some things that that I have been give, been feeling a long time, but I did not pull the trigger. I did not take that leap. And I made a decision, if I'm not going to do it now, when am I going to do it? And God said, this word was not just for you personally, Pastor Betty. He didn't call me Pastor Betty. This word was not just for you. This word is for you as my spokesperson, as my prophet, to tell and share with the people of God, because many of them are in that same place, not maybe at the same level. He said many, because they are doing things busy and making some progress, they think they are out of stuff. They are just barely out of stuff. I got more open. The Lord is coming back for a church that is obedient, a church that is without spot and wrinkle. We're not going out of here looking raggedly, having our clothes spotted. God got a remnant of people like he did with Norm that is going to make their resolve. Hallelujah. For God, I live. For God, I die. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to take God's word at its raw form. I'm going to stop dissecting it. I'm going to stop trying to uh, pick at it until it seems as if it's not relevant for today. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. There is nothing new under the sun. And he said, woe to you who add and subtract. And he's taking people who's going to preach his word, the full gospel, and this raw form, not compromising, hallelujah, trying to bring the word to fit the people, glory be to God, to manipulate them for attendance, and the list go on. I am saying, I know I'm saying some hard stuff. I don't know why I'm saying some stuff, because it's not in my notes, except the Holy Spirit is giving me to say that. Hallelujah. For these coming events, he says, so he uh, was prompted by faith, being forewarned by God of coming events. And God is going to show his church. And if you got the spirit of discernment, and if you don't, you better seek after, after it. Because deception is at an all-time high. The, the church is sometimes being manipulated and on puppet strings by the world system and we got to cut them we got to first identify them and deal with them oh man lord jesus holy spirit you got me out here i know you got me yes you got me you got my back and the intercessors got my back hallelujah so he was forewarned by god concerning events of which as yet was not visible signs but he took heed to them and diligently and and uh, reverently and unfailing uh, constructed and prepared that ark to the T for the deliverance of his own family. And then by his obedience, by this faith that he relied on God, he passed on judgment and sentence to the, all of those who was in um, in evil and in uh, direct. Um, opposition of the Lord and that judgment and sentence he passed on the whole world just by his his faith and his action getting out of stuck moving forward with everything that God told him to do and what did he become he became an heir and a possessors of righteousness that relation of being right and doing what is right in the sight of God and therefore uh humankind was the whole earth was replenished at the obedience of one man. Do you all see the importance of you? You think you insignificant. You think if I can be like so-and-so, if I can do this and do that, and I, I would, oh man, I would be a great orator. I would do this for God. But God's got something that is in you that he can use. If you didn't have it, you wouldn't be here. Glory be to God. He's looking for you to be the gift that you're supposed to be. Don't be like anybody else, as we said. Be yourself. Be authentic. And then if we all are authentic to who we are, to what we've called to do, 
some of the problems that exist in the world would not exist because why the salt has showed up on the scene the lighthouse has shown uh, shown its light into and pierced through the darkness of uh, those who know the lord who would do exploits and and understand mysteries would begin to get strategies and have not just answers but solutions to this problem operating under the seven aspects of the anointing the spirit of wisdom understanding knowledge counsel and might and operating in the fear and of the lord and in the spirit of the lord so i am encouraging you all come on let's get out of stuff hallelujah now I'm, I'm teaching this and i you're going to keep hearing me say cutting relationships getting away from man i am not uh, take it in balance. I am not saying that there's not nobody that's going to be instrumental in your life. No one that you should uh, that you should turn off everybody. You don't need to listen to instructions. No, that is going to the opposite end. What am I saying? If you've got anybody in your life that you're looking up to more than you are looking to God, if you've got anybody in your life that you're being more obedient to and loyal to than you are to God, that's what I'm talking about. Cutting out toxic unhealthy ungodly soul ties toxic relationship and and yes people that are influenced but are not leading you right if the uh, he called them blind leaders he didn't say they're just blind people but these are going to be there going to be some leaders that are blind so if the blind leaders are leaders of the blind they both going to fall where into the ditch so i'm not trying to browbeat people but the truth is just the truth glory be to god the truth is just the truth. And so I'm going to give you all an example. Go to 1 Samuel chapter number 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let's start at verse number one. So, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long would you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided, I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he would kill me. And the Lord said, take your heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse, he give him instruction. So in other words, what, why did I bring this up? That I'm, I'm trying to show you all that sometimes you don't want to leave the people. I'm not saying throw people away because I'm telling you to cut the cord, cut the, the ties that bind uh, to, to these relationships. I'm not saying throw the people away, but you're not supposed to take them into your future. You've done what you're supposed to do for them. You didn't help them up to the limit that God wants you to. And God wants you to cut that that's hindering you from obeying him. You cannot, you don't have to toss them away. You don't have to keep them in your company though. You, what your job is from this point on, after you cut the cord, you pray for them. You cover them in the blood and let them take their exodus out of your life. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And so God is saying, we see Samuel, the prophet, is now mourning over God's uh, a sentence over Saul God's rejecting him because of Saul's disobedience. But because Samuel loves Saul, he's mourning over him. And God said, how long are you? And some of you may have to cry cutting some relationship. You said, Lord, but this has been my BFF for 40 years. Or this has been my, as they can, my dog for this many years. Or this has been my, my, my bosom buddy, man. This ain't nobody like him. They've been with me through the thick and the thin they know some secrets other people don't know da, da, da. and i've been here lord you know come on jesus can can we work this thing out but if he tells you to let it go you got to let it go and the lord and you got to because if you don't you're going to be stuck right there in their relationship hallelujah and something some loyalty you think you got in that relationship will show up when you desperately needed that it wasn't really loyalty some people in your life because of opportunity. Some people are in your life because they got an angle and the list go on. And the Lord said to Simeon, now I rejected Saul. Now, how long are you going to be crying over him? That's what, he, how 
know you're going to stay stuck right there in your morning. I got work for you to do. I tell you what, go, go on somewhere. Uh, this is Pastor Betty Interject. Go on somewhere, fill your horn with oil and go. And I'm going to send you to a place because I have a replacement. I got somebody in mind. There's a king that is already in the making. I've already chosen him. And he, for I have provided, I provided for me a king among Jesse's sons. Now you go take the oil, anoint who I tell you to anoint. And I'm going to close with this. I think we are living in the age where there are people who are called in ministry. They're called. All they want to do is do what God called them to do. And sadly, we got red tape in, in the church and they withheld with withhold the anointing oil, meaning anointing them and and launching them into ministry based off of criteria. And it's not criteria that is equal. It is not criteria that is based off of knowing that person's work is based off of who they think they are and how dedicated they are to them and to whatever they're doing. And I am just saying to you, God has who he has ordained and predestined. And if he ordains and anoint you, nobody can prohibit it. Now, I'm not saying for you all, because I know some of you, you're going, you're a buck against leadership. That's not the way. I am saying if God has ordained you, he's got your timing. Nobody can keep you stuck when God wants to move your life forward. But I am, I went through some things and I went through it, I think, for, to make me who I am. And I if I have in my ministry and if people come and join this ministry and I see that they have a definite call on their life, they come to me and say, God has told me, unless God has said it to me. Well, give me a minute. I think something is stuck here. Praise the Lord. Oh, so had a little disruption there, but thank God. Of the Holy Spirit. So as we were saying, that as the Holy Spirit brings people uh, into uh, the ministry, we want them as God has anointed them and they have a desire to want to do the work of the Lord. I am determined and I'm not going to hinder them. I am going to seek the Lord. I'm going to be careful not to lay hands on any man suddenly I am going to be careful not to send out and uh, launch people who are novice, as uh, Timothy says. But if I know that they're seeking God, if I know that they are, are living a godly life, glory be to God, and they come with a desire to, to be launched into ministry, first the Lord is going to show me I am not going to hinder them from doing what they only themselves know that God has called them to do. I want to be obedient to God though because here we see that Samuel as the prophet did not want Saul to be dethroned. Uh, for whatever reason the attachment was, I don't know what the fullness of his mourning over Saul but God said, if I have shown you and told you he's not the one, I have prepared for me already a replacement, if you will. I don't know if I could say replacement. I have prepared the king that I desire to be in place. Then you should not stay stuck. You need to obey me as your part and move forward. So those who are anointed, chosen and appointed, then when they come to me, I don't want to stifle what God has called for them to do. I'm not the one that ordained. God is the one who ordains. So we just have to be careful that we are not sending people who are not equipped out, people who are novices out. But if you know their works, if you know that they've been sitting under your teaching, if you know they've been attending to the word, if you know and they are they are anointed enough to work in your ministry and to be heads of ministry, then when it comes time for them to say that it's time for them to be launched, let's not keep them stuck. Glory be to God. I have been part of that and witnessed that, and that is not a good feeling uh, because a person have not been around all of your life and they have not seen God's hand on your life. 
they make sometimes ill-informed decisions or they make decisions based off of only what they know about you. That's why it's important that we as leaders stay in tune to the Holy Spirit, making sure that we are not uh, uh, being um, unjust in who we launched, who's going to make our ministry look good, etc. But that we make sure that we are in the will of the Lord, because I dare not be one that says, Pastor Betty, hindered me. And if I am hindering you, you better not stay where I'm keeping you stuck. Glory be to God. But anyway, so with that being said, I'm going to draw this to a close. And so I want you guys to take this in balance. Don't you go and premature start running and acting. Take the word of God as I am saying it in balance. At the end of the day, all I am saying you cannot remain stuck in your life waiting for validation that may or may not come. God has put order in place. He has put those that is in the elder role and in the spiritual leader role uh, for us to um, uh, launch, lay hands on and send out. But at the end of the day, it is God who ordains. So, um, we don't want, when you say that sometimes people go to running, hallelujah, learn. If you have not learned how to stay under leadership and all of that, you still got some training to do, but you still got to make sure that your life is moving forward, that no one has created for you artificial boundaries. If God has opened up the way and, and opened up the passage for you to go, you take that foot through that door and you go and don't let anything or anybody hinder you from obeying the voice of the Lord. For we have shown you disobedience has consequences. So I'm going to give you all a few principles before we leave you ready. Take your pencil paper and you can write these down. At the end of the series, I will be giving you all of the principles together. So make sure you're looking for the finale of these, this series so you can come with pencil, paper. A matter of fact, you can rewind and look at this again and take those notes. But as we are talking about a life moving forward, uh, principle number one, I encourage you to move forward for in moving forward, your future is greater than your past. You got to understand that. Move forward for your future is greater than your past, okay? Number two is accomplishments are only made when one becomes detached from the past and move into the future with expectations of a greater tomorrow. Let me say that again. Accomplishments are only made when one becomes detached from the past and move into the future with an expectation for a greater tomorrow. And we're going to be talking about that in detail later on in the series. And we're going to be giving the example from the story of Naomi and Ruth. Number three, a life that is placed on hold is a life that is full. Listen, is a life that is full of frustration. A life that is placed on hold or in the stuck parking uh, mode is a life that is going to be full of frustration. Uh, next, don't let procrastination cause you to live the life of a spectator. Let me say it again. Don't let procrastination or being stuck, being complacent, being comfortable cause you to live the life of a spectator. What's a spectator? That is a person who looks on or watches others. They are an onlooker or just an, an observer. You're not just to be observing life, looking at life, looking at others succeed and excel, wishing sometimes that that was you. It can be you. Matter of fact, you can go better, uh, higher than that. And we said, in this series, we already have told you the danger. Never compare yourself to any other. Each one of us are unique in our own right. 
follow what God has for you. You may desire what someone else is doing because it looks like it's grander. It looks like it's more popular. It looks like that brings you into the spotlight. I am cursing the Hollywood celebrity spirit that is trying to hover over the church in Jesus Christ. You ain't been called to be a celebrity and to be a Hollywood star. You've been called to do the work of the kingdom of God to take on the torch that Jesus left for us to do. Glory be to God. If you get fame and fortune, glory be to God. God will set that stage, but we are not just to be seeking, putting our flesh out there all the time, trying to be a Hollywood star. Hallelujah. So get off the sideline of life and get into the game of life. Hallelujah. Get out of stuck and start moving forward. Don't you be a spectator all of your life, wishing and hoping when you can have it. Because here we, we, we see here uh, the Lord, if you go down to verse number five, no, not verse number five, but uh, uh, verse seven, the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height of his stature, because I have refused him. This was the first son of Jesse. He All of Jesse's sons went before him and the Lord said, uh, look down to verse number eight. And then he brings another son of Benadab and, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this one. So the Lord knew who was the chosen king. So he got all the way down to one who was has not been presented before Samuel back there keeping the sheep, which was David. And that was the one. So do your due diligence. You may not be in the limelight right now. And we are not to seek the limelight. Whatever is done in the secret, God has a timing for you that he will reward you in the open. Hallelujah. We are to humble ourselves and then his job is to exalt us. But we have got that mixed up. We're exalting ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then God has come and humbled us. Let's do it the right way. And so, because if you are chosen, like I said, there will be no accident. There will be no mistake of who is chosen. God orchestrates man's steps, put it on man's heart. He ordains who he wants. And so then the last um, principle I will share with you, you will not be able to move forward if you allow people to set boundaries for you. They will dictate how far you can go because they are afraid of how far you can go that will lead you to your own destiny that may not necessarily support their destiny or may not necessarily include them. People are afraid of you moving forward, leaving them behind. You, if someone is drowning and you're trying to go out there to save them, they say there have been people who have been pulled under by a frantic, an uh, excited, anxious um, person who will not let the rescuer rescue them. And by them pulling on them, they pull them under. Glory be to God. So people uh, can pull you under if you will allow it. They will set boundaries, artificial boundaries, telling you how far you can go when God tells you uh, the sky is the limit. So I thank God for all of you and I encourage you all to come back and listen at this more than once. Listen at what God is saying to you. What area has he been dealing with, the Holy Spirit been dealing with you uh, regarding this subject matter that you're hearing Pastor Betty teach? I am just a, a instrument that is directed to give you this word Re, uh, re, uh, releasing myself and giving my vocal cords to be used for the Holy Spirit. And as I am teaching, always see what he's specifically saying to you and not just hear but what Pastor Betty said, do. Whatever he tells you to do, that's what you do. I so love y'all with the love of Jesus. I tell you all that all the time. Pastor Betty, so, so mean, but the Lord God loves you so much more, more than my human love can come close to or compare with. And I will dare not end this broadcast without making an appeal to someone 
who don't know the Lord. You are stuck. You you seem life is just passing you by. You're getting older, older. You say, I don't have anything to show for it. There's some things I wanted to do in my life as young. I have not even did done that. We're going to be getting into the natural part. Some of you have, have desired. You've never been out of your own current state. You have desired to travel. You have desired um, to get new network and uh, um networking opportunities. You have desire to be in different company than you've been normally used to being around. Uh, you have desire to go back to school. You have desire to get your degree. Um, you have desire to start a brand new career path. You have desire to start your own business, to write your book. Some of you said, I've been doing this and people don't even know I have the gift of sing. You desire to record an album. Some of you have desire to open up some wonderful organizations, being nonprofit and for-profit, and you are stuck. And you said, that dream... <sighs> That, that's way beyond me. That's way beyond what I can even see. Well, that's good if it's beyond what you can see because then that's when God specializes in the things for us that seem impossible. Hallelujah. He's a specialist in that area. And if you're not say you, you just, you're not even touching the surface and your life feel unstuck, you feel bored, you feel like that um, this world is getting worse and you don't know your place in it well that's because you haven't identified yet with really who you are the real you is your inner man and that is made to be in fellowship with the lord and until you get that fellowship right with him you won't know what your full, full purpose is and you said pastor betty i've been compelled listening at you in this series or just listen at this specific teaching to get my life in order i am tired of sitting on the sideline of life barely make it suffering in my mind mentally um contemplating suicide i'm tired of being sick and tired i'm tired of going round and round in circles and i'm doing it in my own strengths and i've tried all that i know to try and i'm still feeling empty and i'm talking to you today Hallelujah, it's time to give your life to the Lord. And you said, well, how do I do that? Simple, I can walk you through this prayer. If you open up your mouth with me, and if you say this prayer after me, it's a done deal. You got to only believe it and confess it. You can't just repeat it after me and not believe it. You got to believe it. So if you're ready to believe it and then to have it, then we can get started with that today. Amen. Here we go again. Something is going on with this computer, but devil, you are alive. We're going to do this. We're going to finish this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I have said something good on this uh, broadcast today because he's been bothering all of my equipment. And I'm not going to bore you all with that. But So it's time for the altar call. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So Father, uh, we thank you today. Are you ready? You say, I want to be safe. Are you ready? Let's go then. Hallelujah. So I ask you to just close your eyes. Uh, and that's only to keep out the distractions. You can keep your eyes open. If you're not, if you're driving or something like that, and you can't close your eyes. Just say the prayer after me. Say, Father, I come to you now, admitting that I need a savior. I know that I have sinned and I'm a sinner, but I thank you that you have given your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for sinners so that our sins could be forgiven and that I can be with you forever. I thank you, Father God, for loving us so that you gave your son. I'm calling upon you now and invite you to come into my life and to save me and to become the Lord of my life. Your word says, and it come to pass that whosoever, doesn't matter my gender, doesn't matter my nationality, doesn't matter uh, my age. You said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So therefore, Lord, I am calling on you today. 
asking that you will come in and save me. Hallelujah. Today, now with my mouth, I confess that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for my sins. But on the third day, he was risen again. I know that I was guilty, but he took on the guilt for the entire world and our sins. Now I ask you by my confession of faith and my belief that Jesus is the son of God and my confession that he is Lord, I am now confident that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Father, I give myself over to the Lordship, to your Lordship, and asking you to be the Lord of my life. Would you come now, live your life in and through me? From this day forward, I make a confession that I am going to follow you. I am now ready to follow you, and I ask that you help me along this new way so that I can become acquainted with you better and better each and every day. In Jesus' name, I pray and I receive my salvation. Amen, amen. And so, hallelujah, thank God for you. Well, you make the best decision you will ever make. Reach out to us. We're going to be putting up momentarily our email, our website, as well as our social media uh, platforms that you can follow us. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to our channel somewhere here. Subscribe to our channel and uh, you will get notifications of what we have content on here. We put sometimes our Thursday uh, service, Bible service that we are doing on live Facebook. So come on over to Facebook on Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. As we go there, look for all of our our um, our um, events and stuff on our website or following us on Facebook. Our Facebook tag is a church is unusual. So you'll see that screen come up, pause it if you need to, to write them all down, subscribe to this channel and we will be appreciative. We would love to open up the doors of the church to anyone who is saved or unsaved. If you just made that prayer and you are not connected to the church, we would love for you to come and be a part of this wonderful ministry. We have a place for you. It's this no church that you will ever go to is going to be perfect, but we strive for perfection, perfecting those things and maturing in the, th perfecting means just maturing in the things what God called us to. We want to have a place that is conducive of love, where Jesus Christ is center focus of the church and the word of God is the highest authority. Pastor Betty is not the, the important person here, but the Holy Spirit who I release and give the, the right of passage in our services. He is the one to focus on. I am an instrument that is used by God, yes, but I am the, they call the angel of the church and I'm here, hallelujah, under his direction. So I'm asking you when you're looking for church home, make sure first of all, the word of God is being preached there, that no opinion is your final authority, but the word of God is your final authority, where Jesus is center focus and not a personality. Love people, admire people, mark those that's doing well, want to follow them. Remember, mark the perfect man, which is Jesus. Behold to those who are upright. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord. So we will love, love, love to have your kingdom life. You can make that decision now or later. Hallelujah. We have uh, lots of opportunities. We are a church that is, is uh, mandated to uh, uh, nurture, to mature, even to incubate. If those have been hurt and need to be incubated, and then to launch people into their destiny. And we have a wonderful platform for you to grow up spiritually. So uh, reach out to us and let us know, even if you are not desiring to be a member, just let us know if you receive Christ on this broadcast. It is a way for us to look at our metrics and see how we're doing, how instrumental our messages are. Like, share, comment, and let someone else know 
Hallelujah. This can be your seed. You said you don't have a mon monetary seed to give to the ministry. Well, sow a seed of, of uh, paying it forward by helping us support and build this platform till we are viral. We are not going to be just supporting those in the secular world more than we're supporting each other. And uh, we can click these. Uh, we are not asking you to commit to kingdom life just by subscribing to our channel. Just like you do anything, you're stopping by when you need information. All my is clear. I so love y'all to all my partners, Kingdom Life, uh, members, uh, present and future ones. To my 12, hallelujah, disciples uh, in leadership role that I believe in God for very, very soon. That number of government, I need 12 that I can establish the government, the governance department of kingdom life so that we can go do the work of the ministry because there's lots of work to be done. You all pray with me, those who are intercessors and know how to go before the Lord. Keep Pastor Betty up. For two things that is at the height of my heart, and that is uh, these 12 individuals that can come and and I want 12 in leadership roles. Now, if God sent me 12 members, that's fine too. I want, but I want 12 uh leaders. And then then I know the others are coming. We got some stuff to do, you all. And then Pastor Betty is praying for God to open up a facility for me. Would y'all pray? I know I'm believing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There's nothing that is too hard for God. And I'm believing for a place debt free that is conducive to the vision that has been birthed in my spirit. Hallelujah. So I love all of y'all and y'all know I could call all of y'all by name, but this, this have gone on a little longer. Glory be to God. You all have a fantabulous rest of the Sunday. Remember to relax, relate, and to release you who are the people of the most high God. Hallelujah to all of my kings and my queens. I love y'all with the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you all come back next Sunday and join us for part number five of A Life Moving Forward. And we're going to be talking about practical ways how to move forward. I'm going to share with you all some of my own personal testimonies. Number one, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, how to move forward out of debt and become debt free as well. So I love you all. You all be blessed and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Have, have a fantabulous week. Look forward, move forward in this coming week and let nothing, nothing hinder you from obeying the voice of the Lord. Be blessed, people of God. We'll talk to you all soon. Love you. Bye now.